Well, hey, welcome to um, another lecture for Calculus 1. This time we're going to talk about linear approximation. We're in section 4.1, linear approximation, um, in our textbook. Um, the big lesson this week, or this, uh, this lecture, is how to use linear approximation to approximate function values. We're also going to learn about um, error as well. Um, that is to say, we're, we're going to quantify how wrong we are, or maybe how good our approximation is um, after we make approximations. Um, there are um, two uh, YouTube videos um, on this in addition to this lecture. Um, so I'd invite you to watch those. Um, this one right here, a linear approximation of the cube root of 8 plus uh, 8.1 is um, also covered in this video, though not in the same level of detail, I think. Um, so there's still use from that. Um, uh, so um, the first thing that I want to do is I want to talk about what, um, what linear approximation is. Um, and this builds on um, this builds on a concept that we've been using a whole lot this semester. Um, that is to say that the tangent line is the best representation of a differentiable curve at a point of tangency. Um, so uh, to that end, let's draw, um, let's draw a curve. Um, and I'm going to draw a nice kind of like, it's, it's changing slowly, and I'm doing that because I want to highlight um, some facts about it. And if I, if I drew like a rapidly changing curve, I think the, the plot might be harder to, visual, to see what's going on in terms of um, the, the things I want to point out. So let's label our axes, x and y. Um, let's call this curve f, because that's a good name for things. And what I want to do um, is focus our attention on um, a particular point. Um, and, uh, and I'm going to draw two points because um, I, drew that, I drew that tick right there because that looks like a value that we should probably know about. Um, so let's call that A and let's call the one that's nearby it B. Okay. Um, so uh, what I'm calling B is, um, is really, that's really our point of interest. Um, so uh, let me use a slightly different shade of red. So B is the point of interest. And um, the point A is a nearby nice point. So A is just near to B and A is nice. And um, so I'm gonna draw some curve. I'm gonna draw a line. Uh, probably you can predict which line I'm gonna draw as I think about this point right here. So I'm gonna draw, that's right, the tangent line to the best of my ability. All right, so there's the tangent line. Um, and what's so special about the tangent line is that no, um, no line better approximates f um, at a. So in the point, of, uh, nearby the point of tangency in this domain right here, you really can't tell the difference between the function and the line. Um, and that means that um, in, this, in this range of uh, values right here, um, uh, function, um, function values um, uh, are about the same as line values in terms of their outputs, um, in terms of their, uh, yeah, their outputs. Um, so uh, that is to say that um, since B is near to A, Since B is near to A, um, the um, function value at B is going to be about the same thing as the, um, the value of the tangent line um, at B. So our goal is to um, exploit 
the function of uh, the value of the tangent line at B, we're going to exploit that in order to be able to estimate the uh, function values um, uh, nearby some nice point. And that's essentially um, linear approximation. So let's turn the page. Um, so uh, our method essentially is going to be something like um, we're interested in approximating a function value at some point. We want to know f of b. f of b, this is the thing that I'm interested in, um, but I don't have a calculator at hand. Or um, maybe there's some other reason why I'm doing this, but I mean, th these, these, this is a stair-stepping this is a stair-stepping exercise to what you would, um, to more, far more sophisticated methods for um, estimating values of functions um, and things like root finding. Um, so um, uh, we're going to um, assume three things. We're going to assume three things to do this process. One, that our function is differentiable because that, we have to have that because um, that means that the tangent line exists. Okay. Um, uh, point two, B is near some other input A, fine. And then, um, and then three, it's easy to evaluate both F of A and F prime of A. Then um, let's represent X, uh, delta X as the difference between B minus A. So how far away from A is my um, point of interest B? We'll highlight B, that's what we're interested in. Um, then uh, this is the formula that we're going to use uh, right here. This is the formula that we're going to use to estimate the value of the function at our point B. Um, it's equal to f at A plus f prime at A times delta x. And the way that I want you to think about that is that um, this f prime at A, that's the slope of the tangent line, And then um, the delta x part, that's how far along the tangent line we're moving. Okay. So, um, so, so this is um, the method that we we'll use to um, uh, estimate function values. So, um, I want to show you three examples um, where the function has a nice derivative and it's easy to evaluate both the function and the derivative at some nearby point um, to my point of interest. So let's focus just on the case. Um, let's estimate the value um, 8.1 cubed. Now I don't know how, I don't know how to, uh, that's supposed to be a one third. There's a typo here. Let me fix that. I do apologize. That's supposed to be a one third. I hope I only made that typo once. I bet I made it at least twice. Um, okay, so uh, check it out. Um, eight is near 8.1. I happen to know the cube root of um, eight. Um, and not only that, but if I, um, if I think about the function um, the operation, what are we trying to do? We're trying to estimate to the one third power, right? And 8.1 is just like some X. So this really is like X to the one third. So my function that I'm thinking about is X to the one third. Um, and I can evaluate the derivative of X to the one third at eight, no problem also. So um, that is to say that these three things together right here mean that this is a good candidate for linear approximation. Let's draw an analogy for another example. Um, so let's estimate the square root of 65. Okay, um, I don't know that square root off the top of my head, nor do I have the algorithm for producing square roots memorized, but that's okay because 64 is near 65. I happen to know the square root of 64 is eight. 
Um, and the derivative of the square root of x is also easy to evaluate at 64. So all those three things together indicate that, again, this is a great candidate for linear approximation. Finally, I have one that's um, maybe a little bit um, maybe a little bit forced or a little bit pedantic, but that's okay. Um, I want to estimate the, the natural log of 2.8. Okay? I'm going to estimate the natural log of 2.8. Um, well, uh, E happens to be near 2.8. Um, e is 2.71828. I don't have much of that num number memorized. I have about the first three digits of that number memorized. I happen to know that the natural log of E is 1. And I happen to know that the derivative of the natural log, um, which is 1 over x, is easy to evaluate at e, because it's just 1 over e. I mean, supposing that I happen to know the value for 1 over e, and I said, well, here it is. OK, so um, all three of these are going to be good at candidates for doing linear approximation. So um, let's go ahead and explore the method and, um, and do linear approximation for them to all estimate those values, um, knowing that I, I do happen to have a calculator um, at hand as well. Um, to check what the actual values are. Okay, so this is going to be our six-step method. Um, as these are the six steps that I came up with, where the main problem is um, estimate some value, estimate some value of some function. And I think kind of the first part of this is to identify the function that you're working with. Um, like in the case that we had um, estimate uh, um, eight to the one third, um, 8.1 to the one third, our function is x to the one third, right? So like, so this function is kind of the operation that we're doing to this. If I just like take that 8.1 or I just like replace that by like, oh, let's just replace that by an x. So there's nothing really special about 8.1. What am I doing? I have x to the one third. Okay, so our, our function is um, x to the one-third. I think the second thing that we should do is identify the value that we're working with and, um, and call it b, okay? Um, names for things are powerful, and I, lo I love naming things. Um, then let's differentiate f to obtain f prime. Um, we'll identify an a near b so that I know f of a and f prime of a. Like 8 is near to 8.1. 64 is near to um, 65. E is near to 2.8. And all of those, um, in all of those cases, f of a and f prime of a are, quote, easy to evaluate. We'll calculate how far off b is from a. And then finally, we'll use the linear approximation formula um, to go ahead and do that evaluation. Right? And we kind of need each of these pieces. Um, uh, I'll go ahead and label like f of a and f prime of a. Those both, those both come from step four. Um, delta x comes from um, step five. I figure out what f is in step one. Right, so like I kind of have to like, I have to step through these various things in order to do this. So let's practice, okay? So um, let's estimate the cube root of 8.1. Okay, no problem. Um, the first thing that we should do is um, we should figure out, okay, well, like, what's my, well, okay, let's consult my steps. Identify the function I'm working with. Okay, I think my function, what am I doing to 8.1? I'm, I'm taking the cube root. So f of x is equal to um, the cube root of x, which is x to the one third. Step two, identify the x value you're working with. Call it b, two. Um, b is equal to 8.1, three. Differentiate f to find f prime. f prime is equal to one third of x to the minus two-thirds. Four, identify an A close to B. A is 
near B. A is near B. Wow, that just like totally wasn't what I wanted it to be. A is near B. Um, well, uh, A is near 8.1. And I happen to know that um, uh, if I let A equal 8, then F of A equals F of 8 is equal to the cube root of 8, which is 2. And F prime of A equals F prime of 8 is equal to a third of 8 to the minus minus two-thirds. That's equal to a third of um, one over eight to the two-thirds, which is equal to one-third of one over um, uh, two squared. And so this is equal to a twelfth. Step five, calculate delta x. Delta x is the difference between B and A, how far I'm stepping along. This can be negative. That kid totally can be negative. So 8.1 uh, minus 8 is equal to 0 0.1. That's my delta x. And then 6, we'll use our formula. Um, and so F of B equals 8.1 to the third is about the same as um, f of a plus f prime at a delta x is 2 plus a 12th times 0 0.1 is equal to 2 plus 1 over 120. And um, now I know we said we aren't going to use a calculator, um, but the point is that we're we're not truly calculator free. This is this this method is a step toward learning about sophisticated techniques for function estimation. Um, so if I take um, and add these two things together, I get two point zero zero eight and a three with a bar over it. Okay, and we did it. That's our final value. Two point oh eight. 0083 with a bar. Okay. Let's turn page. So let's practice that same thing for um, the square root of 65. Uh, let's see here. So um, f of x is equal to um, x to the 1 half. Uh, b is equal to 65. Um, f prime is equal to 1 half x to the minus 1 half. A is equal to 64. Delta X is equal to 1. Uh, then I just kind of need um, F of A is F of 64 is equal to 8. And F prime of A is equal to F prime of 64 is equal to 1 half of 1 over the square root of 64 equals um, 1 over 16. So I've got these three pieces. I've got these three pieces, my, uh, my delta x. I've got my f of a. I've got my f prime of a. That means I'm ready to go ahead and do my estimate. So f of b is equal to the square root of 65 is about the same thing as um, f of a plus f prime of a times delta x, which is 8 plus um, 1 16th times 1 is equal to um, 8 plus, let's see here, 1 16th is um, equal to um, 0 0.0625. So this is 8.0625. And that's our estimate. Let's do one more. Let's do the natural log. Let's estimate this natural log value. We'll see here. So f of x is equal to natural log of x. Um, b is equal to 2.8. a is equal to e is equal to 
828 and some stuff. F prime of X is equal to one over X. F of A is equal to F of the natural number is equal to natural log of E, that's just one. And F prime of A is equal to F prime of E is equal to one over E, which is um, equal to 0 .0, uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, Three, six, seven, eight, seven, nine, and some stuff. So we need our delta x too. Delta x is 2.8 minus 2.71828, um, which is equal to, let's see here, 0 0.081. Seven two. Uh, that last digit there, I'm, I'm sure is wrong. I'm sure that's actually a one. Uh, these numbers are like a little bit wonky to work with. So how about we call that point one, and how about we call that about equal to like point uh three five. So this estimate's like not strictly speaking going to be the linear approximation, but I'm still going to use it. Um, to do it. So um, uh, the natural log of 2.8 is about the same thing as um, 1 plus 0.35 times 0.1 is equal to 1.035. Or if you wanted to actually use those numbers, it'd be 1 plus 0.367879 times 0.08172. And now I'm going to turn to my calculator to do this. 0.3678 times 0.08172. Um, that's 0. Uh, 0.0005. I need more, more digits is going to improve this. There, there are accuracy concerns having to do with the precision you use in terms of the numbers that you use. Um, so I'm getting 1.03005, and I'm not willing to write any more digits considering I hardly used any digits in this number when I put that into my calculator. You know, they're like not that far off. Okay. Let's turn the page. So we just, we just made three estimates of three different function values. We um, played with the cube root of 8, we played with the square root of 65, uh, and we played with the natural log, the, sorry, the cube root of 8.1, and the natural log of 2.8, and we found, we found approximations for them. Um, but they were all wrong. We incurred error in each of those cases. Um, and, um, and we'd really like to be able to quantify how, how far off were we. Um, and so there's this word, error, Error um, is um, is uh, a quantification. Of um, of how far the um, estimate is from the true value. Um, and I, I have a pretty nice YouTube video about specifically this topic, which I would invite you to watch separately as well, if you'd like. Um, so uh, I would like to draw your attention to um, a couple, hey, why, why did you do that? To a couple of symbols, um, M. Um, I'm calling that our, um, our estimated value was M, right? And then the exact value that we wanted, uh, I'm saying is like F of X naught or um, F of, B. Okay, so M is about the same thing as F of B. So um, there's the absolute error, or just plain old error. Um, and uh, I don't have a special symbol for it right now, but that's just the difference between our exact value and the estimated value with an absolute value, because I'm just going to measure the distance. This is just the raw distance. Um, 
there's um, what we call the relative error, um, which is going to take um, the regular error or the absolute error and divide that by um, the scale of um, actual. So that is to say we're going to take the um, difference between m and f of b. We're going to absolute value it to get a difference, and we're going to divide that by um, the absolute value of f of, these are, yeah, f of f of b. Yeah, there we go. Sorry. Um, and uh, then there's the percentage error, um, and this is the relative error times 100 uh, to get it into the world of percent. So this is 100 times m minus f of b over f of b, the absolute values, or 100 times m minus f of x naught over f of x naught. So the percent error um, is just the relative error scaled by 100 to get it into the world of percents, right? Per cent, per 100. Okay, so um, let's calculate how far off, let's calculate, let's quantify our error in each of the three cases that we did before. So um, the cube root of 8.1, we found that the cube root of 8.1 was uh, 2.0083 and a bar. In order to know the absolute error, that's going to be the difference between 2.0083 and a bar minus the actual cube root of 8.1. So um, what is the cube root of 8.1? Uh, I'm going to turn to a calculator for that completely. So 8 to the 1 third. Nope, 8.1 to the 1 third. Come on, Sylviana. Ooh, this number is um, 2.0083 in a bar minus 2.0082988. I should have left myself more space right here. I apologize. Um, and so that difference is, I'm gonna turn to my calculator to make that. For me, 2.08 and then a bunch of threes minus, ooh, that's, uh, that's not far at all. That's pretty good. Where is the first decimal places where they where they differ? Um, looks like the um, looks like the one, two, three, fourth decimal places. Yeah, the fourth decimal places where they differ. Um, and we find that this value is equal to um, point oh 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 three four four seven nine. Seems pretty small, but, but you know, like if we're trying to estimate, if we were trying to estimate um, some function value and we got like um, 0. 0.0002 as an estimate for something that was actually like 0. 0.0005, um, well, this 0. 0.0002 is like, it's not, it's, 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 it's actually pretty far away as a, as a scale of the thing that we were trying to measure. And so the relative error kind of quantifies, like relative to the scale of the thing that we were trying to measure, how far off was that? I say more about that in my YouTube video if you're interested. So the relative error, I'm going to take the absolute error, um, and I divide that by um, the actual value. And uh, in this case, that's 0. 0.00003447 9 
divided by um, 2.00829885. And we're going to find it's going to um, shrink 5 out of factor of 2. Let's push backspace a whole bunch. Point oh 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 three four four seven nine divided by ooh, I bet there's a way that I can do that on my iPad screen. I have to learn how to do that. Um, and so I get point oh 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 one seven one six eight. And then in terms of percent error, the percent error is um, relative times 100. That's the worst percent symbol I've ever drawn, I think. Um, it's 0 .00017168 times 100 is equal to 0 0.001716A. That is to say, um, we are, um, that's, and that's percent. So that's, that's pretty close. Um, that is, that is pretty darn close. So, uh, that's, um, about one part in, um, it would have been, uh, let's see here. So one, one percent would be one part in a hundred. Uh, so it'd be a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand. Um, so it's about one part and this is not tight, but it's about one part in, um, a hundred thousand. That's pretty good. Good enough for your engineering qualification restrictions or needs. I don't know. That seems pretty good. Okay, let's repeat that same uh, procedure with um, with the square root. So what did we find the square root of 65 was? We found that that was about the same thing as 8 point, oh, I don't remember, 0625. The actual value for the square root of 65, according to my calculator, is... Um, 8.0622577. So the absolute value or absolute error is 8.0625 minus 8.0622577, which is 8.0. 625 minus 0. 0.0002422525. Some stuff. Again, like just getting this raw number right here, just getting this raw number as the absolute error doesn't give, it doesn't really measure the quality of the estimate. You know, like, if you're trying to measure the surface of the temperature of the surface of the sun and you're off by a d one degree, that that's stellar. If you're trying to estimate the um, temperature of a human body and you're off by a degree, that's significant because one degree can mean the difference between life and death. Um, so we want to quantify that and relative error helps us do that. So let's take the, um, uh, Rel the absolute error, point oh oh, wrong tool, point oh oh oh, two four two two five, divided by the actual value, eight point oh six two two five seven seven, and I get point oh 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 two four two two five, div, point oh oh oh. Oh, three, oh, oh, four, seven. These last digits are untrustworthy. And then as a percent error, um, that's relative times 100. So that's um, 
Um, so that's uh, one part in a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand. So that's about one part in thirty thousand. That's how far off we were for that one. And finally, we produced um, two different estimates for the natural log of 2.8, one using some um, pretty mediocre uh, values just by like just really gross rounding, um, and one by actually using a calculator. So what do we find? 1.035 and 1.03005. One point. So we found two different. We found 1.035 or 1.03005. So let's measure um, the relative error for both of these estimates. We need to know the natural log of um, 2.8, natural log of um, 2.8 is, um, natural log of, that's the wrong color, I wanted purple, not periwinkle. Natural log of 2.8 is equal to 1.02961941. Some stuff. So the um, absolute error is equal to um, 1.035 minus. Minus 1.02961941 and some stuff is equal to. Did I forget absolute value signs? Okay, I didn't. Whew. So I better put my 1.035 right there. I was um, 0 0.00538 away. And the higher quality one, absolute error, is the absolute value of 1.0. 3005 minus 1.0035 minus. So let me just adjust this 005 minus. Ooh, this one's better. 0.0004306. Ooh, we, that's a look. That's a decimal place better. But is that you know like? As a percent, so like we want to measure, we want to measure these two, um, these two absolute errors relative to the scale of the original thing. Now the actual value is near one, and so when we do the relative, it's not going to change much. So the lower quality one, I'm going to go 0 0.00538 divided by 1.02961941. Put that in my calculator, 0 0.00538 divided by, not changing much, 0 0.00522. And the higher quality one is 0 0.0004306 divided by 1.02961941. div. Ooh, 0 0.0041821. Uh, I'm missing a zero. There's a zero right there. So finally, um, as a percent error, um, lower quality versus higher quality. The lower quality one is 5.225% um, off, whereas the higher quality one is... Um, uh, 
let's see here, is um, 0.418%. So um, the two different methods produced really different estimates from each other, right? That's an order of magnitude off. So um, I, th I think that there was a lot of value in me um, in me doing the mediocre method for estimating the natural log going back two pages. Um, so uh, again, what was my mediocre method? I was just like, oh, well, I don't want to deal with this number right here, this 0 0.367879. So what, I, let me just take that to be 0 0.35. And then um, this value right here, like I don't want to deal with that thing. How about I just make that be like 0 0.1? And I got this value here, this value here. Which one is better? Which one's better? Well, we just found that um, the one where I put more effort in was only 0.4% off, whereas the one where I just kind of like threw out a bunch of digits um, was 5% off. So the method of estimation matters. I think that's one of the major takeaways to learn here. Method of estimation matters. Um, and there's a bunch more to this story that I can't possibly do with you. Um, there are so many different ways of estimating function values. There are so many ways to estimate f of b. Um, and, uh, if this is something that's interesting to you, I hope it is because our computers do these things all the time. Um, then you may enjoy, um, pursuing, uh, further courses beyond this one calculus course, um, in the world of mathematics. Um, so that's what I have to say about, um, linear approximation. That was my last page. Um, and so I want to say thank you so much for being with me today. And I will look forward to um, our next video together um, next week. Thank you. Bye.